Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first session of the series, Teaching Online. It's about teaching, not technology. My name is Jose Manuel Villafuerte, and I will be with you today as a moderator, along with your host, Regional English Language Officer Ruth Petzold, who will also be your host. We will try to answer your questions and respond to your comments during the session. Today, our host, Ruth Petzold, will be talking to our presenters, Wendy Colson, Heather Gaddis, and Cindy Spoon, about the series and what you can expect. So let's get started. Hi, everyone. We are delighted to have you join us for this webinar series which was designed with Mexico in mind, but we're sure it will be helpful for others joining from various countries around the world. Um, it's designed for meeting our needs now, but also in the future, because who knows, we might just find we like teaching online. I want to remind you that in order to receive news about upcoming webinar sessions, tips and tools for English language teaching, please like the Relo Mexico Facebook page. So today is the first session of the series Teaching Online. It's about teaching, not technology. As you can see on our calendar, over the next six weeks, we'll be talking about making the most of a video conferencing system, using cell phones to teach in low tech or low connectivity environments, creating classroom activities in learning management systems, teaching students of different age groups virtually, learning how to do classroom management differentiated instruction, assessment, and evaluation in an online environment. We are sure you'll be hearing lots of practical ideas from our experienced panelists. But right now, we are interested in what topic you are most eager to learn about. Please let us know in the comments on Facebook. So here's what to expect each Monday and Thursday over the next six weeks. Each session is about 60 minutes long. Today might be a bit shorter. Uh, our aim in each session is to show you which tools can help you teach the way you want to, to make you as comfortable in this new virtual classroom as you were in your physical one. Each week, each session, one expert will be presenting the material primarily, and sometimes there'll be the support of a second panelist. And I, as the host, will make sure that they hear your questions and your comments. So please do share your thoughts in the comments section. And of course, you can use the emojis too. So let's start our series with a warm up question. You can just think about it, or you can write it in the comments section if you want to. Think about a time when you were teaching in a new situation. Was it uncomfortable at first? What's one thing that helped make it easier? We hope that through that little reflection, you recognize that you've faced challenges before and you made it through the experience and you will again this time. In today's session, we'll be doing four things. We'll meet our specialists. We'll be reviewing the objectives and the themes of this, of this series we'll be defining some key concepts and we'll do a survey at the end 
to find out more about you. And now let me welcome our experts, Cindy Spoon, Wendy Colson, and Heather Gaddis, and ask them to introduce themselves. Cindy? Hi, everybody. I'm Cindy Spoon. I have been working in the field of international education for many years. I have um, two master's degrees. One is in intercultural training and advising, and the other one is in TESOL. And I've had the opportunity to use my teaching skills uh, all over the world. I was a Peace Corps volunteer in the Philippines and later ran the first Peace Corps training in Estonia. And I have lived and worked on the tiny island of Dominica. And in 2017, I was in South America as an English language fellow working in Chile. I had the chance to work with Chilean teachers of English and help them uh, collaborate on improving their instructional strategies and revising curriculum. And I'm currently working as a high school teacher, so I'm also transitioning to this online teaching. So I'm excited to be with you for this webinar series. Wendy? Hi teachers, I'm Wendy Colson, and I'm talking to you from San Miguel de Allende where I've lived for the past 15 years, but I've lived 16 years in Mexico, the additional year in the Sonoran Desert. I specialize in teaching young learners and training their teachers. I also have a couple of master's degrees, one in applied linguistics and TESOL and the other in bilingual education. I have experience um, in many places around the world, such as Jordan and Tunisia and Colombia as an EL specialist and fellow. I also have teaching experience in the United States, Hungary, Myanmar, and Bangladesh. I'm currently working uh, teaching teachers online in Myanmar, and I will be uh, sharing my expertise with you in the lower grades, uh, primary school, secondary school, also differentiation in classroom management, as well as uh, low tech uh, environments. See you later. <laughs> Hello, everybody. So my name is Heather Gaddis, um, and I also live in Mexico, actually not too far from Wendy. Um, and I've lived here for about 10 years. So I lived my first year in Popopan de Leon, Oaxaca, in the south of Mexico. And now I live in central Mexico, in Querétaro. So I've been working with pre-service and in-service um, teachers in Mexico, coordinating and training teacher training courses. I also have a couple of master's degrees, a, a theme, I guess, um, one in applied linguistics and another one in educational technology. Um, and I worked for a couple of years specifically on working with teachers on how to incorporate, how to integrate technology into their classroom practice. So I've seen some of the, um, the rough points that, that, it, that happen sometimes. Um, and I'm currently a, a freelance teacher trainer and also an examiner. Um, working in Mexico. Wow, it's great to get to know all of you better. Um, we are eager to hear what each of you has to share with us over the next six weeks. So Heather, you're our primary speaker today. So back over to you. Okay. Thank you, Ruth. Okay, so um, I just wanna give you a little bit of insight or a little bit of what we were thinking about. I'm Wendy and Cindy and I, when we were planning um, this series for you guys. So one thing that was very important for us was to recognize your teaching experience. So we understand that many teachers feel uncomfortable and just out of control, out of their comfort zone by these recent changes. So we want you to know that you will adjust, just like Ruth said at the beginning, and you will be able to apply your experience to whatever is thrown at you. So what we aim to do through this series is to demonstrate ways you can adapt what you already do. So I've seen in the comments already, you know, how do we do speaking skills? How do we do receptive skills? So we will talk about how to do those things that we know are important no matter where we're teaching um, and to make it work in your environment, right? 
So another important idea for us was to make, um, was that while these are extraordinary times, you know, we were pushed into this very quickly, the changes that have been put into place will leave a lasting mark on English teaching in Mexico, on education in general in Mexico. So what I want to say with that is learning how to integrate technology into your teaching practice is a skill that you need now, definitely. But you will also need to continue to develop this skill as part of your professional practice. So we try to incorporate that idea into this series of webinars by balancing tools. So technologies that you need to know how to use like Zoom and, G and Google Meets, but also with criteria or ways for choosing tools so that it's not just about the tool, it's about the teaching, right? So, um, so we want to go through tips and best practices for setting up your online classroom, no matter what platform you're going to use. So some other factors that we took into account when organizing the sessions were the age of your students. So you know, all of you are, are teaching different ages of students, so that's important. We also took into account tools for different purposes and also the context in which you're teaching. So um, first of all, English is taught at all levels of public and private education in Mexico. And with each um, age group, there are its own challenges, content, stakeholders. Some of you work with parents, some of you don't work with parents. So for this reason, we have sessions that are focused on the little ones in kindergarten through third grade, the upper elementary grades of fourth through sixth grade, secondary and high school, and then the young adults and university students. So also when it comes to tools, we've chosen some categories or types of tools, such as video conferencing platforms like Zoom and Google Meet, learning management systems like Google Classroom and Moodle, communication platforms and apps so that you can put some games um, and some fun into your, your classroom. And we want to demonstrate how to integrate these tools into your teaching practice so that you can promote collaboration critical thinking and an overall positive experience for your students. Um, so the last thing we wanted to take into account was your context, because some of you are teaching where you have excellent access to the internet and that's beautiful. And some of you are teaching in more low tech or more low connectivity um, environments. And we wanted to take that into account in order to give you different ways to reach out to your students. Okay. So here is a nice little word cloud um, with some buzzwords. So I know when it comes to teaching online, um, there are a lot of buzzwords, a lot of words that you hear. Um, so we want to kind of discuss some of these concepts throughout the series, and I'm going to discuss some of them right now, um, just kind of briefly. But we want to recognize that Yes, you need to know these buzzwords because you need to be able to look for tools, you need to be able to find um, activities that work for you, but also we want you to know that we know integrating technology into teaching is not a one size fits all. So we aim through this series in order for you to be familiar with these concepts, but in order to, in a way that you can use them um, for your own teaching context. So some of the um, concepts we will talk about are related to different modalities or different ways of teaching online or learning online, such as synchronous learning versus asynchronous learning, and then blended learning and flipped learning. And then skills that we also want to foster um, online are autonomy, digital citizenship, collaboration, in addition to helping you choose tools and resources to use with your students. So now let's go a little bit deeper into some of these concepts that I just mentioned. Okay. So the first one is synchronous versus asynchronous. So synchronous learning includes online classes in which the teacher and the students are online at the same time. So you can see here on the left side of um, the screen, there's a little kind of Zoom meeting or Google Meets uh, meeting going on. And so this is an example of synchronous learning. So this might include um, lectures, discussions, or presentations that occur at a specific time, just like a regular face-to-face -face class. So tools that you may use for synchronous learning are chat, tele um, a telephone, video conferencing like Zoom and Google Meets, um, which is the topic of the next session. Um, so these are some ways to have that face-to-face -face, or kind of recreate that face-to-face -face, um, feeling of a classroom. 
The next is asynchronous learning. And so this allows your students to work according to their own schedule. So it's where you as the teacher, you provide materials, readings, videos, tests, assignments that can be accessed at any time. So you might give students a time limit, say a week, um, during which they need to work through the content. But in general, students are free to contribute whenever they choose or whenever they can. So tools that you may use for asynchronous learning are email, discussion boards, learning management systems, and even social networking apps. So learning management systems is the topic of the third session in this series. And then social networking apps like WhatsApp will be discussed in session four. So oftentimes synchronous and asynchronous are used together and they complement one another. For example, asynchronous learning can be used to give students flexibility in terms of when and where they do their assignments. And it can give them the freedom to read an article or watch a video as many times as they need to understand a concept. And synchronous learning gives students the opportunities to learn with and from their classmates and teachers in real time, asking questions and getting immediate feedback. So the next thing, um, concept I'm going to talk about is blended learning. So this is an approach where we combine face-to-face -face teaching with online resources and tools. So blended learning comes in many forms, many flavors. For example, students may use a learning management system like Google Classroom to access content. And then they go to class for discussions and presentations and activities. Another example is when students work or they don't live very close to the school. So there may be face-to-face -face classes on weekends with assignments for students to complete on their own during the week. There are quite a, a lot of master's programs and university programs that work this way. Another way of thinking about this is that the online component of blended learning may be done asynchronously, and then you have the face-to-face -face part in class. Um, so at this point, unfortunately, um, blended learning is not an option. We can't have that face-to-face -face part, but it, it's something that I wanted to talk about because it may be an option as schools look for creative ways to reduce class sizes. Okay. So flipped learning, um, this is an approach where certain activities that normally take place in class, like teachers explaining an idea, are taken out of the classroom and they happen at home. So this allows for class time to be used to work with students, such as working through practical exercises. So the sequence of flipped learning, so if we use our visuals on the screen, the sequence is students are first exposed to content through videos or readings, and then class time is spent for deeper learning through hands-on activities. So you can see here a student is watching a video maybe on the present perfect, which is my favorite verb tense. And then the student goes to class to participate in speaking activities using that verb tense, okay? So you may have noticed that this is just another way of doing blended learning. So the key I would say to flip learning is that, student, that the student has the responsibility to come to class with some knowledge and some curiosity about the topic that the teacher that can then guide and help them um, deepen. Student autonomy is a key ingredient in flipped learning, as well as a skill that is fostered by flipped learning. So we will be discussing this type of learning in several sessions in this series, such as how to use learning management systems like Google Classroom to flip your class. Okay, so the final concept I want to talk about is digital citizenship. So digital citizenship is the responsible, the responsible use of digital resources, such as the internet. And it means that a person is using technology to help others and recognizes that the actions we take online have consequences in the real world. Just like we have duties and responsibilities and rights as the citizen of a particular country, like obeying laws and treating others fairly, there are rules and responsibilities when using technology and participating in the digital world. So a couple of important elements of digital citizenship include digital security and privacy. 
So teachers and students need to be aware of how to protect their identities online. So such as through the use of good secure passwords and not sharing personal information. We sometimes think that this is obvious to students, but it's not. They need to be told and taught how they can keep themselves um, safe at all times, especially online. Another important element is digital literacy. So this requires students to be able to um, use information and communication technologies to find, evaluate, and create new information. So an example of this is teaching students how to identify reliable sources of information on the internet and to not be pulled in and fooled by fake news. So I think this is extremely important for students um, to learn to think critically about the information they see online. Um, so the final element I will discuss in terms of digital citizenship is digital etiquette. So these are the rules that determine how we treat others online. So as teachers, one of the things that we need to do when it comes to digital etiquette is we need to set rules for how students um, should be, communicate and behave when they're using platforms such as Google Classroom or such as email in our classes, just like we would tell students that they can't speak to each other in certain ways or they need to treat, treat each other respectfully, we have to do the same thing online. We will discuss digital citizenship in more detail in the sessions that are focused on different grade levels. Um, because digital, did it, I'm sorry, digital citizenship should be incorporated depending on the age of students. As they become aware of certain issues like bullying, then we can start to address those areas as um, when it comes to digital citizenship. So that's when we'll be talk talking about those different concepts. So we would love to learn more about you and your teaching context. I can see from the um, chat that there are people from different parts of Mexico, as well as parts of Latin America. I think I even saw someone from very far away. Um, I can't remember what country right now, but you guys are from all over the place. So we would love to learn more about you and your teaching context. So here's a quick survey. So depending on what type of device you're using, you can either scan it or you can go to um, the link and I'm sure they're gonna put the link in the chat um, soon. And it'll take you, I think less than five minutes. We just wanna know a little bit about who your students are, what level they are and what tools you've used and what sessions you're looking forward to. So just, it would be very helpful and we would greatly appreciate it. So while they're filling out uh, their surveys, um, the farthest away I saw Heather uh, in, the, in the comment section was France, but I might have missed um, others. Uh, there were lots of comments being made right now. I think we have over 70 comments. Um, so we're grateful for your input. Um, we're grateful for the input that you're doing on the survey right now. And um, I'm sure our presenters will use that to tailor, to shape future sessions. It helps, yes, they know Mexico, uh, well, but- uh, And it, Ruth, Ruth, it sounds like, it looks like we have somebody from Dubai. So that's oh, even a tiny bit, a little bit further a away. A little bit further, yes. <laughs> so that's great. Uh, we're glad to have you join us. Um, it will add some, perhaps interesting context uh, to the uh, future sessions to think about, because our speakers have had um, experience in lots of other contexts besides Mexico too. So um, perhaps if there's a significant number or a really interesting point brought in from somewhere else in the world, uh, we can work that into the appropriate session. So. Well, thank you, Heather, for giving us a preview uh, of what we're going to be learning about in this series. I'm really excited. Um, I am not a specialist. I don't know all of this, so I'm learning uh, as we go. And the topics really look relevant to me and, and fascinating. Some of them I think will, will really be uh, enlightening for, well, I'll speak for myself, but I think I'm speaking for lots of people that uh, this will be an enlightening uh, series. 
So what I am sure of is that at the end, we will all be more comfortable and capable online teachers than we are now. So yes, watch party. Um, we'd also like to um, talk about this, but before we talk about watch parties, I wanna thank our audience uh, for all your comments. And I am happy to see that our person on, well, it was our moderator you met at the very beginning, Jose Manuel has been busy answering uh, the questions in the comments section. So um, if he doesn't have an answer to your question yet, just hold on and he'll get there. <laughs> so, but we are grateful for all your interaction. Um, once we're finished, please share what you've learned, not just today, but uh, after every session, um, share ideas, but also your reflections on those ideas. And um, one way of sharing with your colleagues is by hosting a watch party. Um, so to do that, obviously on Facebook, um, you will start a post. And when the box pops up for the posting, uh, you'll click on the three dots at the bottom right to give yourself more options. Then select watch party. Choose this video and publish it. At that point, your friends will receive notification to watch the recording with you. And while you're watching, you can pause for reflection, you can comment there as well, and so on. So it gives you a chance of sharing the video with your own circle of colleagues or friends. So Cindy is our speaker next time, that is on Thursday afternoon. So Cindy, would you tell us now what we'll be talking about on Thursday? Yes. Hello again. I'll be your lead presenter uh, for the next session. And I'm excited about modeling how to use tools in platforms like Zoom and Google Meet. And I'll be showing you how to set up classroom activities such as group work and interactive exercises. So uh, I hope that you'll join me on Thursday. Thank you. Great, thank you, Cindy. I look forward to it. So once again, it's been great spending a little time with everyone this afternoon. As I mentioned at the beginning, today's session is shorter because it's just the overview of what we are going to be doing in the remaining five and a half weeks. But uh, starting again uh, on Thursday, we'll be with you for a full hour. Thursday, May 28th, 4 p.m. Mexico City time. We'll see you then for our next session. Bye-bye, everyone. Okay, um, just Ruth, one, one thing. I see a couple people are still having some problems with the survey. So I'm gonna go back to the slide with the survey and keep it okay. there for a couple minutes um, for people if they wanna take a pic, you can take a picture of it, that'll be a good thing. And then you can um, go to it later or you can scan it if you have that. Um, so I'm gonna keep this here if that's okay for a couple okay. minutes for people to, to get that. That'll give me a chance to look at the comments. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, seeing some people here I know. <laughs> Great to see friends and colleagues. Does it look like things are going better with the survey now? Um, let me see. I think so. I'm looking at, I've, I've replied to a couple people and ah, some people are putting the direct link also again. So it looks like people are helping each other out, which is great. That's cool. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yep.
Well, great to see so many people from all over. And um, yes, please also uh, share uh, the information with others who might not have been able to join us today, um, even though they've missed the overview of the um, really meaty or, or informative sessions are still to come. So it won't be hard for people to catch up at that point. So please uh, do pass on the information that uh, the webinar series is I, still I, at the beginning. Um, I see a question, um, Ruth, about the watch party. Um, so do you want to go back to that? Screen? Yeah. So let's see. Um, there we go. So um, Josie, if you're still listening, um, so Ruth's going to quickly go over the watch party again. Um, right. So, mm -hmm. so you need to be on Facebook. And when you um, begin as if you're going to do a posting, uh, it'll open up a box for the posting. And there are three dots. You see the yellow arrow uh, on the first image in the top left corner. That yellow arrow is pointing to the three dots, which you should click on. And that will give you um, a choice of options. That is the image in the upper right hand corner. And there you want to choose video. Um, and then you'll select this video. And that will then send a message to your friends who um, can watch the recording with you. And then you can pause the recording. It's a recording. So you can do uh, what you like. You can watch it all the way through or you can stop in between and do a, um, a reflection or comments, whatever. So as someone who um, recently introduced the idea of watch parties to me said, I've never done it before, just try it and see. <laughs> so I think it's probably quite easy, but um, give, give, um, give it a shot. And if it doesn't work out so well, we'll address that topic again uh, next session. On the question of certificates, we thought about certificates. We would love to give you certificates, but we couldn't figure out a good way to do it because um, we don't have enrollment. You are all joining us or not joining us on every session. And so the um, the joy of this session will be for interacting with our speakers. And um, we hope that that is reward enough and that you uh, benefit from the, sem from the webinar um, enough that uh, you don't miss the certificate. Uh, apologies, I know they're important, but in this particular case, we weren't quite sure how we could handle it. We're certainly interested if somebody has suggestions, but we can't give a, a certificate without evidence of uh, your participation, so. Does that take care of what we are being asked? Okay, um, so one thing that I just want to um, comment is, you know, time zones are tricky. <laughs> um, someone right. pointed out, you know, just this is four o'clock central standard time or Mexico um, time. So it's something to take into account. Um, if you schedule this or you want to be with us every Monday and Thursday to adjust it to whatever your time zone is. Yeah. So mm -hmm. the ads all say Mexico City time. So just pop that into Google and you'll find out how many hours we are behind you or ahead of you and adjust the start time. Mm -hmm. Okay. So at this yep. point, yep. I think very that good. We'll see everyone on Thursday. Thanks for joining us today. Bye-bye. <laughs>